It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, where I've been having a great time playing Origins How We Became Human. Because I've been having a great time, I just by kind of a, it took a little time for some of the some of the options to kind of lock in. I played it very fast, and that may be one reason I had a great time, or I've been having a great time. But also, I I wanted I, I think this gets in at uh, touches on how how games or any sort of work fits in with memory. Some of you may have certain movies you're nostalgic about, or certain books that you enjoyed as children, or even cartoon shows that you enjoyed as children um, that still have a certain appeal for you, to you, even though um, maybe if you had just discovered them for the first time now, you wouldn't enjoy that. I don't think Origins quite fits in that place with me. for me. I think if I discovered the game now, I would still be excited about it, but I think part of it too is just my uh, my history with it. So um, it was one of the first kind of weightier games that I that I learned. It took me quite a bit of effort at the time to learn how to play it. I don't think it would take me near as long now because you kind of build up a vocabulary and kind of there's a skill to learning rules that you kind of develop over time as well. But um, so I don't want to keep talking about why I enjoy the game, um, but I think it's it's good to be aware of the fact that um, these these cultural objects or these these works of art that we experience, we can't really experience them devoid of our own memory and our own experience, our own past experience, I guess. So let's build on that experience now and move into the future with Origins, How We Became Human, Medical. Let's look out at our map here. We see Hair Bear's blue squares are definitely in the majority. Um, I'm, I'm going to be interested in seeing what's going to happen between him and Flip. Uh, flip or Flips? Flips, yeah, that's right. Uh, because they are the only two that are kind of able to move out in the open. Both our, our Hobbit here, Chinky, and our Crow Magnon, Dick, are just kind of stuck, trapped by um, our climate. We've had a very even distribution of climate change going on, which has been, um, which has been fun. Uh, but made it kind of a two-person game for right now. I mean, this this is we're we're going all the way through era four here, so we got a long way to go. But right now, um, Hair Bear's got a definite power advantage, if not point advantage. Chinky has the point advantage right now, though I guess if we were to add it up, he has three, four, five, and Hair Bear's got four, so he doesn't have too much. But these are a lot more set in stone these points here than the demography points because those are those can fluctuate by you know the roll of a die as we saw last time with Dick losing half his population because of a poor chaos roll. So we're gonna go into Hair Bear now, see what he's gonna do. Is he gonna try to move ahead in, in age or stick with what he's doing? Um, one nice thing he could try to do is um, domesticate the horse. The horse is uh, it's it's a, he's able to right now because it's a tropical age. And also it's got that double minus, so he could get a cavalry animal off that, jump up to Bronze Age technology, and really have um, a strong advantage in terms of in terms of fightiness, and I think he would like that. He could maybe even take flips out if he wanted to. And after drawing a card, um, maybe hoping to get some, some point scoring cards, though, would have a hard time bidding against flips just to kind of see what was out there. Um, he told some stories which reset, like reinvigorated his elders and then expended them. He's going to try to domesticate the horse. Uh, three or less is what he wants to roll. And he got a two, so that's going to put him there, bump him up to the Bronze Age. Now he can move through the jungle now, um, which could be good. It's going to be hard with both the desert and the jungle. I don't know if that's even possible for him. But if one of those flips, he can he can settle Southern Africa, which you know is pretty nice. Got a, yet another um, metropolis. He's got three now, so he could he could build up to four elders. You can have one more elder than you have um, metropoli. And what else? That says footprint goes up to two. His footprint's already two, so that's not going to be a thing. Oh, it's already three. That's right. Jeez. Okay. Um, now he's got some card play. He definitely wants to get a fecundity decrease in there and probably go ahead and reset one of his elders. So just go ahead and play both of his cards. Get a fecundity decrease, reset an elder, and that looks good. So Hair Bear's population actions, he has two big choices here. And here's where I kind of have to step back and 
not let my own proclivities influence too much the way he's going to play. I think Hare Bear is kind of a aggressive, if cautious, player, but definitely aggressive if he thinks he has the upper hand, which it seems like he does right now. Um, he could, I mean, he could try to maneuver over here in hopes the Ice Age comes in and do the long haul over to the New World. I have seen that fail so many times where people just end up waiting like either because you have to you basically have to wait for the weather to change twice and if you're doing that and not doing much else you're not doing much um, anyway I won't go into that he could also do a Sabine raid here which is probably what I would do I think you know he could take this and uh, clear up his Broca's area but instead what he's gonna do is he's gonna take out this cube right here he wants to just drive flips back and take her over. So she's down to one there. Now what he's going to have to do in order to take this metropolis in her final place is um, he needs to have three, no, two cubes there. If he put another cube there, he would have it because he gets plus one from this. She has equal to her footprint in defense when you have a metropolis and her footprint is two. So that's what that's where he's at. And let's go on to Dick, see what he can can do. Cheeky just drew a wonderful card. It's um, accounting tokens, and despite the obvious reasons accounting tokens would be wonderful, uh, it allows him to get sick. And why is it great that he gets sick? It's because he gets to learn child swaddling as a result. He also gets two fecundity increases, which are generally negative. They give you more population actions, but make it more likely for you to go into chaos. And you also have this horrible, um, this horrible uh, stuffed up innovation track. So he's going to hold on to actually the card. He's not going to play it, but the 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 uh, bad effect still triggers. And that's an optional rule. You don't have to play these right away. I, th I think most general consensus I've of the people I've talked to about the game think that's better. He is also going to play this for the right hand side. Uh, he's got to watch out that um, Hair Bear doesn't move ahead or get an eye icon and get this because he actually has footprint three to play it. But he wants to play for the right-hand side because Chinky really doesn't want to go into chaos for some reason. Uh, does he really care that much if he goes into chaos? His turn would just end. Yeah, I think maybe he'll hold it. No, he has to play something. That's right. That's why he's playing it. I, I knew there was a reason I was doing that, but then I got interrupted. Okay, so what, what that's going to do is he can do these in either order. Uh, the fecundity decrease is optional. He does want to do it. The loss of an elder is not optional, because why would you choose to do it? Well, here it's not so bad. He's going to lose it. The innovation track's full, so it's going to go down to his population track, which gums that up, and then he's going to get a fecundity decrease there. Still not a very pretty demography, but at least he has what he needs now to get into the, the Golden Age. Another reason it's good to domesticate some animal before you go into Era 2. And I'm not doing the... Oh, it's because then it gets your energy up to 1. I'm not going to do the thing where you get to do cattle rustling to get your energy up to 1. Because um, that just makes for a less interesting game in some ways, especially if you're playing multiplayer. Usually when I play with, you know, a multiplayer solitaire, usually when I play with other people, I do it that way. But um, right now I'm not going to use that rule. So uh, basically you have to domesticate in order to get that energy up to one or get some other card that lets you do it. I might have it be like if there's just no more animals left later on that you can um, go ahead and do the cattle rustling, but not for a while, not for a while. Now, if you recall Flips last time, she has the nice demography that's pretty easy to get the, the stuff for. Although I guess we found that Chinky didn't have too hard of a time getting sick either, but it's not something he can just domesticate something and get his requirements like, like Flips can do. So she can go into a golden age right now, which is nice. because So now her main goal is going to be to get cubes on the map so that she can go into chaos. Big problem with that is going to be... Um, all of Hair Bear's people out there. She's going to go ahead and do two population increases, I think. She dies if she hits, runs into them, doesn't she? And if she dies too much, then it's going to start filling up her population again. So she really needs to just kind of get away from him. Um, so he'll win any fight. So if she could go here, that's water, isn't it? There's not really anywhere she can go. She can go over here. And that's water. She can go. No, she can't go there. She can't go there. I think she's stuck. She can lose one guy, and that'll that'll take her down to three. 
Oh, I should roll her chaos first. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. She could go into chaos right now, but she does not. Okay, so she's gonna move one of these. Doesn't really matter where it goes, it's gonna die. She'll flail at him. Or does she wanna starve to death? Flail or starve? Flail or starve? She'll starve to death. All right, there we go. That way she seems more peaceful and maybe he won't take over her metropolis, though I think he will. Hey, we're made in the air too. Also got another elder, did some resetting. Really nice looking demography here. Um, he's keeping it down to one population action, however, because he doesn't have any administration to really deal with his people. Now he's going into population actions. He's going to pop this guy out, or maybe not. Maybe he's just gonna move something he already has. He does not want to, um, yeah. So let's see. He could go up that way, or he could just pop a guy out and go there. What I'm wondering is for sieges, and here's something I guess I should check the, is his intention is to besiege that metropolis there. Um, if you cross water, I know if you do an attack, if you cross waterway, that, that makes your attack weaker. Uh, does it do that for sieges? I don't think so. I'm gonna say no and not worry too much about it. And we'll just go up through here. This is all soggy because the ice is melted. He's gonna go there. So then at the end of his turn, he's gonna besiege um, Flips here. And she is now going to be his, essentially. Um, this is gonna go back, cover up her population action. It's not so bad for her, she gets a footprint increase. And anytime either of them gets an infrastructure increase, the other one is also gonna get it. That doesn't bump her metallurgy up. But um, that's, a, that's a, a nice, it can be a nice thing, especially if they can work together. I've had situations with um, semi-opposed play, I guess, where I've gotten a good relationship going with my slave and um, we've been able to work together to kind of do pretty well for ourselves for the most part. Um, what can she do on her turn? She can't, she's really restricted in what she can do. She can pop out cubes around his city and that's mainly what she can do. So she can still do innovation actions, but if you can see, she doesn't have a lot of that. So she's just gonna be able to really focus on herself. And sometimes that can be nice too. You don't have to worry about the, the map so much as a slave. Chinky was able to use his superior culture, his body paint, to entice one of Hair Bear's elders to his uh, producer side, which is nice. Um, it, it maybe would have been nicer to, to get it off of his his innovation track, but he feels like if that hinders Hair Bear, then that's probably pretty good right now, and it benefits him. He was able to use his use the card that could have got him an elder for a fecundity decrease, which is always nice as well. Um, Dick, for his part, he got his population in control, so he's no longer going to have to worry about going into chaos, starting his innovation track a little more clear. And other than that, those are two stuck guys. That's kind of what they're doing. Chinky's in a better spot overall. Flips, for her part, drew a card, hoping to get something she could bid on. She's got a couple elders there, which is nice. Um, she might tie with Hair Bear, but you know, there's a decent chance that N would be higher than A, so why not do that? She's kind of stuck there anyway. Um, unfortunately, failed her chaos roll. She is going to pop out a cube, though, and since her footprint is now three, because she's enslaved, she'll pop out a cube right here. She could go anywhere there, couldn't she? Wouldn't it be bad to be... Uh, I think she'll keep it here for now. And she, there's a lot of metropolis, metropolises for her to, to expand on and put her slaves out. So that's, so uh, Hair Bear's strength here is actually a strength for her because her main goal right now is to go into chaos so she can become a racist and then move her way into matrimony. But that's gonna be a little harder because she has to get to energy two. Energy two is, is trickier to get to. Generally, you have to um, do some resource extraction to get it to happen. You gotta get a five or six right here. And that would be nice for her. Let's go to Hair Bear. So a lot of a lot of what we're looking at here is Hair Bear is gonna be the main actor. He's got control of pretty much everything until the climate changes uh, and lets these two out. Um, or until they get, get some, uh, their maritime up, that would help too. 
Herbert, however, did not have any trouble going into chaos. He did some stuff, got the alphabet, which is nice. It gives him the naturalist ability. But then he rolled a one, which is kind of a mixed blessing. So what one thing that's going to do is that's going to make it so there no the slavery ends. Um, but it's also going to let him go into era three really fast. This 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 hair bear fellow is kind of blessed. On the downside, he's not going to be able to go in the golden age for a while. He's going to have to lose half his cubes on the map, and his turn's going to end. He's not going to be able to do any um, population actions, which he would have liked to do because he has um, a resource extraction card. And so with that kind of biofuel is where you want to be looking to get to era or get, get to energy stage two, and you got to roll a six on that. So you oftentimes need to do a lot of attempts. So let's see, he's got three, four, five, six, seven cubes on the map. He's going to take off the one that's not a city, um, another one that's not a city. He's got to get rid of one more. Oh, another one that's not a city. So he'll get rid of all three that aren't a city, and that's going to end his turn. He is in slavery, which. Um, Funnily enough, ended slavery for Flips. So Flips is pretty vulnerable right here. She's got a singular cube, so he could probably get her enslaved again if he really wanted to, which he does. Flips is close to being able to besiege this uh, this metropolis that Herbert took from her. Uh, not quite enough, though. She needed five to do it um, because he's got footprint of three plus one for the metallurgy advantage, so she needs five to, to, to beat that four. <laughs> the world favors those who are doing well uh, in this case. Hair Bear is getting super lucky. Uh, to understand that, you'd kind of have to understand what he's trying to do right now, which is to get his energy up to two so that he can move up to nationhood and be in a good place in a golden age and then able to also go you know into era four if he needs to um in order to do that the the standard ways are through biofuel which is there there and in hawaii um with if we were to like dis discount his card draw of this turn, which is which is crucial, his card draw of this turn is where he got the luck. I should state that he would have to um, start bumping flips out here in order to get control of this biofuel space. Uh, that's the main reason he wants to really keep this this metropolis. I mean, he's got plenty of other areas, um, but that metropolis here allows him to have kind of. A, a better access to this biofuel, which is a lot easier to get to than any of the other ones, which require some maritime or some weird funky stuff going into the new world. However, he just drew a card that lets him just bump his energy up, which is great for him. Now, playing this will also allow um, other people to maybe get it if they're in era three, which flips is close to getting to, but She's not yet. He also got this administration card, which will make it harder for him to go into chaos, um, which can be nice. And he took uh, Flips's footprint card here. So he's got to decide the order he wants to play these. I think he wants to probably play this one first. It would allow him to domesticate an animal. He's not going to worry about that right now. And that's going to get him up to energy, energy rating 2 which is pretty huge. That's that that's oftentimes a hard bottleneck to get through, but he just did it through a card play because of his enormous luck. He can get this without anyone bidding against him, though he does have to bid one elder here. And then the resource extraction card isn't that compelling anymore. I think he'll play this one just to get his footprint up to four. And then he's going to have to play another card. He doesn't want to play this one. That would just be giving it to Flips, and he scores on eyes, which are nice. He'll go ahead and play this one, uh, get himself an Elder, and bring his Immunology up. And unfortunately, he doesn't get to do the resources extraction, but that's less crucial now since he just had that card that lets him bump up his energy to two. He's running away with the game, it looks like to me. But we'll see what happens. There, there can be a lot of swings in Origins, How We Became Human, which is fun. But he definitely is still dominant. 
Cheeky just got himself to hay, which um, highlights something I got wrong. I was letting people move through here because it's not an ice age. You're not supposed to be able to do that unless you have hay. But I'm going to rationalize that in saying that the people who did that, which was Flips and Hair Bear, their people had some sort of cultural practice that let them deal with that, but it didn't stick. So in the past, they were able to go through these tundra areas, but now they won't be able to unless they get up to food storage. That was a big fault of my own, which um, I take full responsibility for, but I'm now going to alight over through some revisionist history. And with that error, we'll call it good for this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, and we'll maybe we'll think a little bit about why things are the way they are. Uh, things seem to be going very well for Hair Bear, but a large part of that is just because of climate. The climate is the way it is right here, and people happen to be where they are right there when the climate became the way it is right there. And that, in, I would, I, I'm gonna wager to say even more so than Hair Bear's own decisions, has been why he is so successful, has been so successful in this game of Origins, how he became human. If one of these cards flipped, or if they had flipped differently, I think we could be looking at a very different game. And that's one, one reason I really enjoy Origins, how he became human. I like that it um, is somewhat honest about uh, how much of the choice in our own success is our own choice. Not to say that we are impotent actors who just have to follow a script, but certain choices are going to end up being better, seeming better in hindsight, uh, given external factors. And there are some large factors over which even now in this 21st century we have very little control, and one of those is the weather.